In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Molly and Tyler, the Church shares your joy and warmly welcomes you, together with your family and friends, as today, in the presence of God our Father, you establish between yourselves a lifelong partnership. May the Lord hear you on this your joyful day. May he send you help from heaven to protect you. May he grant your heart's desire and fulfill every one of your prayers. And on this joyful occasion, we give glory to God as we sing. Glory to God in the Oh God. 
Let us pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness, pour out your grace on these, your servants, Tyler and Molly, that coming before your altar, they may be confirmed in love for one another. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our scripture readings. I invite Derek forward to proclaim the first reading. A reading from the book of Tobit. On their wedding night, Tobiah arose from bed and said to his wife, Sister, get up. Let us pray and beg our Lord to have mercy on us and grant us deliverance. Sarah got up and they started to pray and begged that deliverance might be theirs. They began with these words. Blessed are you, O God of our fathers. Praise be your name forever and ever. Let the heavens and all your creation praise you forever. You made Adam and you gave him his wife Eve to be his help and support. And from these two, the human race descended. You said, it is not good for the man to be alone. Let us make him a partner like himself. Now, Lord, you know that I take this wife of mine not because of lust, but for a noble purpose. Call down your mercy on me and on her, and allow us to live together to a happy old age. They said together, Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord. Let us now listen to the 
listen attentively to our second reading proclaimed by Catherine. St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. Let love be sincere, hate what is evil, Hold on to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Anticipate one, one another in showing honor. Do not grow slack in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Endure in affliction. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the Holy Ones. Exercise hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Have the same regard for one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be concerned for what is noble in the sight of all. And if impossible, on your part, live at peace with it all. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. One of the Pharisees, a scholar of the law, tested Jesus by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. 
pretty straightforward. Uh, and yet, right, what that looks like in practice right, takes some fleshing out. You give me some of the most thoughtful reflections on the readings that you chose that I've ever had from, uh, from any couple. And I'd like to share those because I think that they really help to flesh out right, what it looks like to love God and neighbor. And so you talked about uh, reflecting on that first reading from Tobit, Tobiah's prayer on uh, the wedding night of him and his wife, Sarah. And right, you talked about choosing the prayer because you enter into the sacrament not with each other, not only with each other, but with God. Right? That essential right there is that God's a part of everything. God's especially a part of your marriage. And right, in loving God or in loving each other, right, you also love God. Then you talked about the emphasis that uh, the reading puts on creation, on partnership, and purpose. Right? Again, that's a good way of loving God and loving each other and taking care of creation and being attentive to your partnership and being mindful of your purpose. Right? And, and prayer starts with acknowledging creation uh, which you said you hope to never take for granted. And then there's a beautiful part in the middle of the prayer about uh, mutual help and support. You gave him, his wife Eve, to be his help and support, and from these two the human race descended. And you said you found that line moving, right? that it's important to you in your continued partnership that you are of help and support to each other. Again, loving God by loving each other. You mentioned that successful partners exhibit this selfless support for each other. And you aspire to that. And uh, this is a, a direct quote from Tyler. That support found in a partner, never lacking with Molly, ties into the noble purpose at the end of the reading. Your, your marriage is for you, but it's for something greater. Right? It's a sacrament of service right? for your families, for the world. And the, uh, the prayer ends uh, with the prayer to live together to a happy old age. It's your hope, that's our hope. That your marriage leads you to a happy old age. And then the second letter from, or the second reading from the letter of St. Paul is a beautiful description of what it looks like to love God and love neighbor. He said that you both share the belief that God is what is good and pleasing and perfect, what you aspire to. And that's important to remember because uh, it sometimes can be easy to forget during times of strife or difficulty right? and there's the admonition in the prayer to rejoice in hope and endure in affliction right? that with your eyes set on that god which is greater right? there is uh, reason to hope right? even when things things get tough and then you reflected on being imitators of Christ, loving one another with mutual affection, blessing those who persecute. And you focused on that end of the reading. Where it said, have the same regard for one another. That mutual affection, that sense of partnership. That's what you're aspiring to. That's pretty cool. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Right? Let you come in humility. Not wise in your own estimation. Again, humility, not, uh, 
and not repay anyone evil for evil, but be concerned what is noble in the sight of all, and if possible, live at peace with all. He said, you hope to live your lives that way. Hope that your future family and communities will live that way as well. A beautiful thought and an outline for the way to live a full and promising life, a full and promising marriage. And so I think right, what we're doing here today is expressing your commitment to try. Right? That over and over, right, you know, do well some days and less well on others. And the thing that you're standing up here before your friends and family saying, yeah, this is what we want. And this is what we commit to keep trying to do. So ready to commit to that trying? Then I invite you up here and your wedding parties to join you to express that commitment. Molly and Tyler, you have come together into the house of the Lord so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intention. Tyler and Molly, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? I am. Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, join your hands and declare your consent before God and his church. I, Tyler, take you, Molly, to be my wife. I, Tyler, take you, Molly, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. I, Molly, take you, Tyler, to be my husband. I, Molly, take you, Tyler, to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad. In sickness and in health in sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. May the Lord bless these rings which you give to each other as a sign of your love and fidelity. So, Molly's ring to Tyler. Molly, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. Molly, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. ring to Molly. Tyler, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. Tyler, take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Dear brothers and sisters, let us call to mind the special gift of grace and charity by which God has been pleased to crown and consecrate the love of our sister Molly and our brother Tyler. And let us now stand together and commend them to the Lord. You guys can have a seat. You guys can return to your place and I invite Sarah to come up for the prayers of the faithful. And I invite Sarah to come up for the prayers of the faithful. Our response is, Lord, hear a prayer. For the church and its leaders, especially for Francis our Pope, Jerome our Bishop, and Ben our Pastor. May they be filled with grace and blessing as they shepherd the people of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our elected leaders, may they lead lives of selfless service, and may they always enact laws which uphold the common good and dignity of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Molly and Tyler, who are beginning their married life today. May they continue to be blessed with loving family and friends who strengthen and uphold them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all newly married couples, especially Tyler and Molly, may they continue to serve others and be open to new opportunities to better serve the world around them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all individuals impacted by war and violence, and all the poor and forgotten. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially for Donald F. Geary, Abby Jill Braun, Jim Harvey, and Hannah Turgan, may they be welcomed with joy into the eternal banquet. We pray to the Lord. Graciously pour out upon this husband and wife, O Lord, the spirit of your love, to make them one in heart, one in soul, so that nothing whatever may divide those you have joined and no harm come to those you have filled with your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for the offertory.
Please stand with me and pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Receive in your kindness, Lord, the offerings we bring in gladness before you and in your fatherly love. Watch over those you have joined in a sacramental covenant through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in him you have made a new covenant with your people, so that as you have redeemed man and woman by the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, so in Christ you might make them partakers of divine nature and joint heirs with him of heavenly glory. In the union of husband and wife, you give a sign of Christ's loving gift of grace, so that the sacrament we celebrate might draw us back more deeply into the wondrous design of your love. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we praise you and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Ignatius and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. Strengthen, we pray, in the grace of marriage, Molly and Tyler, whom you have brought happily to their wedding day, that under your protection, they may always be faithful in their lives to the covenant they have sealed in your presence. And in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let's pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us humbly invoke by our prayers, dear brothers and sisters, God's blessing upon this bride and groom, that in his kindness he may favor with his help those on whom he has bestowed the sacrament of matrimony. Holy Father, maker of the whole world, who created man and woman in your image and willed that their union be crowned with your blessing, we humbly beseech you for these, your servants, who are joined today in the sacrament of matrimony. May your abundant blessing, Lord, come down upon this bride, Molly, and upon Tyler, her companion for life. May the Holy Spirit set their hearts aflame from on high, so that living out together the gift of matrimony, they may adorn their family with children and enrich the church. In happiness, may they praise you, O Lord. In sorrow, may they seek you out. May they have the joy of your presence to assist them in their toil and know that you are near to comfort them in their need. Let them pray to you in the Holy Assembly and bear witness to you in the world. And after a happy old age, together with the circle of friends that surrounds them, may they come to the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's offer each other a sign of peace.
Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. i 
Let us pray. By the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, accompany with loving favor what in your providence you have instituted so as to make of one heart and love those you have already joined in this holy union and replenished with the one bread and one chalice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray for God's blessing. May God, the all-powerful Father, grant you joy, grant you his joy, and bless you in your children. Amen. May the only begotten Son of God stand by you with compassion in good times and in bad. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit of God always pour forth his love into your hearts. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I now present to you Mr. and Mrs. Tyler and Molly Zeman.